you. Good morning. It is a beautiful Wednesday. Well, it's kind of cloudy out here. It's typical Seattle spring weather, so it looks kind of like summer and winter at the same time. Today's gonna be a really fun day. I'm planning to go up to look at cherry blossoms. The cherry blossoms at UW in Seattle are like world-class, beautiful, totally amazing. So I finally have an hour today to go up there and just kind of walk around. I'm gonna go watch a really cool talk about data science from a researcher at Microsoft. And then tonight, I'm giving a talk about the wave at Kepler campaign. Let's get it. Wait, I'm not going anywhere because I have to work. Something's out there in space that regulations don't cover. Ladies and gentlemen, please be delivered. The cherry blossoms are one of my favorite things about this campus. I only come out for a few weeks, but it's pretty magical. One of the things that makes it so cool is you see so many kids and families taking pictures. We brought our kid here to take pictures. It's the perfect moment in time each year to just stop and think about the beauty of nature and spring and all those cool things. And they're just really pretty. Okay, midday check-in. So the cherry blossoms were totally awesome. Hopefully some of those shots turned out. It really was stunning and the place was packed even on a Wednesday around lunchtime. It was totally awesome. The rest of today, uh, I have to write this talk that I'm giving tonight and in like a half hour I'm going to this uh, seminar. So we'll see how that goes. Going to a talk. <laughs> I just went to a really interesting talk by Dana Boyd, who's a researcher at Microsoft. She's a principal researcher at Microsoft Research, which, side note, I did an internship at Microsoft Research four, five years ago, and it was an awesome experience, and I would totally recommend places like Microsoft Research or other sort of industry-focused academic kinds of places as a great experience for scientists, even people like me who are not computer scientists. But that's an aside. She gave a really fascinating seminar uh, talk on data and society and ethics and it's super timely right now when we're considering what's happening with our private data and our personal data and the impacts it's having on the structure of our society and democracy uh, but she also gave a lot of really concrete and interesting examples of uh, ethics should be baked into your practice baked into the code that you're writing and the culture of your company one area that got me thinking about is in astronomy. It's easy for us to think we study the stars, we don't study people, we don't study uh, society, we're studying these, these things. That doesn't mean we're removed from the ethics of how we study them, uh, what we choose to study as opposed to what we choose not to study, how we publish them, how we gather our data, how we fund this data, how we deal with the people that are actually doing the development and the engineering and the sites. And one concrete example to talk about, just because it's been in the news a lot lately, has been the TMT, or the 30 meter telescope, uh, and its location in Hawaii on top of Mauna Kea, which is a sacred place for the uh, native peoples of Hawaii. So even in astronomy, we have to consider the impact of technology and our study and our practice of science, the, the impact it has ethically uh, on the world around us. It was interesting. It was very thought provoking and a great way to start this seminar series for the quarter. Okay, so now I have to finish the talk that I'm giving later, which is about something much more uh, sort of light, uh, which I'm giving at a bar. So uh, tonight I'll be drinking beers and talking about science. So uh, it's a good evening. All right, I'm almost late. I got like five minutes to get down to this uh, brewery where I'm giving a talk. Thankfully, I'm giving the second talk. So if I'm two minutes late, it should be okay. Okay, I think I made it. Yes, this is it. That's us. Oh, 
Am I up? All right, astronomy on tap. Look at this, look at this giant crowd right here. This is gonna be fun. Also, shout out to Peddler Brewing, really good pale ale. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jim Davenport. <laughs> Okay, I'm shamelessly making a vlog today, so you are all now part of it. Say hey to YouTube. That was shameless enough. Um, I'm talking about a very serious uh, subject today of a selfie that was taken from outer space. Um, and just to prove it is serious, I put sunglasses on the Earth. Why? Other than to give this awesome five-minute spiel um, at Peddler Brewing. Okay. On the philosophical note, Kepler is a space telescope. It's flying in the magic of outer space. If that's you and everyone you've ever known and everything that was and is and ever shall be, um, except for the one spacecraft, uh, is in this dot. It's poignant, right? We're traveling to outer space. Kepler is 94 million miles away, and we took a picture of ourselves. It's a poignant thing. It has less fuel in it than I have beer in this glass at this point. It's literally running out of fuel, and it will probably be dead in the next, I don't know, six, eight months. Nobody's exactly sure. The data started to come down, and it was so amazing that halfway through my PhD, I abandoned my thesis project and told my advisor, I'm either going to jump in this Kepler game or I'm quitting. It's better to be the second person to do something really awesome than the first person to do something that nobody cares about. So we expected it to look like a bright mess, and we were not disappointed. <laughs> So this is it. This is you on December 10th. You were here. I hope you were smiling and brushed your teeth um, because this is you. And here's me, hashtag, waving at Kepler in true Seattle style with my flannel and my Seahawks hat. That's my story. That's my personal story today at Peddler Brewing. I want to say thank you to this little telescope that could and that convinced me to drop what I was doing and change everything. Uh, and uh, thank you, Kepler. <laughs> You get the idea. I think that there's this very distinct pattern. Uh, the last time that I was here, I looked like this. It might be hard to recognize me, so I'm wearing a hat. Right, you got the oh, okay. There she is. And three, we need to do some follow up to make sure that the R process elements were actually working for. I'm in the vlog. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> I had not seen your previous stock, so. It was all about beer and how beer is really cool and fun to drink, and it's made all about uh, all by the Big Bang and stars. That's that's about it. Okay, so let's start. We need to start building a star. Hello, everybody. As Brett mentioned, my name is Guadalupe Tovar. I'm going to talk to you about a telescope that's going to be launching fairly soon. We work on a project called SPANT, which stands for the search for planets around post-main sequence stars. Woo! 